Alright chaps, we've had some pretty epic track videos lately, but we're back in the barn today. The barn is still here, look. We're still here, we're still residents, us, the rats, the sheep. The cows have gone pretty much, but yeah. So anyway, I'm doing a few bits on the MR2 today. Been working out how much fuel it uses in them, for, well, when it's on circuit really, when it's racing. Roughly 550 mil per minute is what I've worked out, which is, that's a, that's a high estimate, you know, that's a safety net. So that's what I'm going to work to, and yeah, a lot less than I thought it would be, but kind of checks out with some other things that I thought. I've got fuel everywhere doing that as well, and I've made a bit of a mess, but yeah, obviously I don't want to run out of fuel again, but I don't want to cost myself time, because I was over a second a lap slower with a full tank, and I still had, at the end of the race, 24 litres on board, which is too much really, isn't it? You don't want to be finishing the race with that much fuel, it's just, you know, costing me time. But the star of today's video is probably going to be Ed's Skyline because tomorrow we're taking this on an actual track day. Right? I want you to forget that it's a drift car a minute. Forget it's a drift car. Just imagine for a moment that it's a 500 wheel horse R32 Skyline. Yeah? What does that remind you of? Now the issue is it's got a bit D1 spec alignment and we might end up doing something about that today. Depends how the day goes. He's just making a duct now. What's that duct for? What's your duct for? So he's making a duct go between his intercooler and his radiator. Yeah. He doesn't quite believe me how much chill track days are compared to drifting. Because your car takes so much abuse on drifting, but track day, I think, I think you'll be surprised at, at the general atmosphere and stuff. I think you'll be surprised. But. But there'll be obs there, of course. I mean, we're going, aren't we? So, um, but yeah, the reason we're going is to bed that posh clutch that I bought in, just so that it can go to a drift day in confidence that it can use it properly because it's had a few heat cycles on circuit. Yeah, that's the idea of the track day anyway. But today, garage video. I'm working on the MR2. Just going to be checking out the alignment and stuff, seeing um, you know if it's out. It drove fine, other than the occasional little wheel wobble from this jobby but yeah it's still holding air fine it's not lost a pound it's bang on you know but obviously i'll not be racing on them next week anyway at brands hatch so yeah a little check over the mr2 for me and like i said the star of the show really is this thing which we're going to be driving at donington park tomorrow so what can we do to make a drift car go well on circuit from drift to grip what should we change well we should change, really, the tyre compound at the back, because currently it's got budgets for, you know, cheap skids. It's got some half-decent front tyre, so they'll probably be alright. But we've also got at the rear, can you tell, we've got a bit of positive camber. Oh, that's not going to be too good, is it? We've got a welded diff in, and Ed does have a two-way. You do have a two-way, don't you? But it's a car's two-way, but we can't fit it because we don't have any oil. Although Ed did order some oil in, uh, some... Uh, nondescript delivery company let him down so we can't fit the two-way so we're gonna have to go with the welded which I think it'll be fine I think it'll be kind of cool to be honest but we are gonna have some grips you're borrowing his rear tires right so he's got some 265 semi slicks right remember we're bedding the clutch in anyway so we're not gonna be doing anything silly we're just gonna be driving it round on track but it's pretty well set up for drifting wise you know it's got all the, the coilovers and it's you know, all the poly bushes and you know, all the right stuff. So it, it should be pretty good. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna try and get some negative camber. Obviously we'll have to check the toe after doing that as well. The front alignment's fine, we'll leave that. Um, we need to try and quiet it down a bit because it's so loud. A bit like that machinery. So the drifting noise regulations are quite similar to the rest of the track really. Obviously it's a track, not really the, this, the event or the sport. It's more to do with the, the local council at the track. So. He's had problems before with sound, with noise. And you do have a baffle, right? Or did that, oh no, you, you blew the shit out of the baffle, didn't you? Yeah, it's got a I remember. Right, okay. So, I mean, I'm pretty sure people on the internet have heard it before. It's, it's reasonably loud. Um, but yes, yeah, first time I'm going to go at a, a, grip, a grip thing in the, in the Skyline. So, it's 500 wheel horsepower. So, you know, that's a heavy amount of the flywheel. We're not going to be trying to set lap times or anything like that. It's just going to be a laugh, really, I think. And obviously, the most important thing is to get some miles on that clutch in a non-drifting environment, so hopefully it lasts, because it was a lot of money, probably 10 times the cost of a track day just for that clutch. So, 
you know, a bit of insurance. That's the idea anyway. So yeah, I'm going to pod on with mine anyway. I need to change the wheels, check the alignment. Hopefully not too much. I was going to change the engine oil as well. Yeah, I've done all year so far on the engine oil. Uh, about 550. No, it'll be about 600 now, racing miles. So yeah, probably due a change in it. All right, just for everyone's reference, this is how much my car thinks it's got in when I put 15 litres in. One five, 15 litres, right? Fucking stupid car. All right, we're no longer changing the engine oil. I can't find any of my filters. Bought loads of them, but... God. <laughs> the mess just gets worse. I've picked a different engine oil. So the oil that's been in it and has been absolutely fine and it hasn't used any and it's you know been really great obviously now's the time to try something else right if it's too good i want to go down a weight so they come 530 from the factory and i want to try 530 again it's 540 in there now with the miller stuff but this is 530 a bit thinner and it's shell not obviously you can see that now the reason there's a couple of reasons why i'm trying this first of all this is a spare litre that i had from when i did the oil change on the 5 Series recently. I thought, hey, that probably worked quite well in the uh, MR2. I looked at the spec sheet for this specific one, this ECT C3, because there's loads of different shell helixes. You wouldn't believe how many variants of shell helix 530 there are. But this specific one, ECT C3, seems pretty good. I mean, they're all pretty good, but yeah, I think it'll be all right. and. Obviously there's only one way we can measure how effective it is and that's whether the car blows up or not. But yeah, let's just change the wheels and check the alignment. Because the day's getting away. Oh and the reason, the reason why obviously lighter engine oil, less friction, more fasts maybe. And it's just, you know, I thought it might be worth a try. Go a bit lighter and see what happens. I tried to get the Miller's stuff but they don't do it, they only do a 0-30. Um, which would have been fine really I guess but, you know. I already had some of the shells, so we'll try that. But yeah, if the Ginettas, that not 30 from Miller's is designed for Ginettas, and they run a, a Mazda 2 litre, I think. All right, I'm presently trying to find a good set of tyres to race on. We know we've got some good rear tyres, but do we want to use them at Brat? Well, yeah, actually, we will use the good rears in the race. Yeah, that's a no brainer, isn't it? Yeah, we've got two good rears. So we need some good fronts as well. Now, fronts is something that I've got quite a few of. I've just found this lingering, look at it. It's like brand new. I feel like something must have happened where the centre of the tread made contact with like the inner wing or something, I don't know. Something happened because the, the tyre looks a bit weird. Here's a front, isn't it? Yeah, it's a front tyre. So you can be my front left, I think, for brands. And that's the rear, I think. We need to find a front right. I think I've got two in the car somewhere. That's pretty strong. My issue with the fronts is they don't really wear down tread wise, but obviously they do the same amount of feet cycles as the rear. Even if they don't get as intense. See all the blue, that's all the good stuff. That's all the good stuff of the tyre coming out, but yeah, that'll probably do for a front right, won't it? If you're wondering why it looks so dusty, well, <laughs> welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy. What? Well, look at the dusty tyre. Oh, yeah. Well, it's a cheap soldering iron from about 20 years ago, so. <laughs> Would you believe? Right, front right tyre. Should I get a marker pen and mark them? No, we'll just put them on the car. Front left. And then, fuck them off, fuck that off. And then our rear tires are there, look. Oh, look at them. Beauties! Remember, the tread depth isn't everything on the racing tires, but I really want to have a good go at brands, because, you know, I really like the track. I think I can be faster there. Or I have been faster there, you know. I've been top three before, so, you know, let's try and do it again. Back on the OEM wheels. Just had something very interesting happen, so, I say very interesting. That's my um, hood latch thing, bonnet 
latch aero catch thing, yeah? And it was a bit, a bit wobbly. See, it's, it's mounted on a little bit of thin metal, but it's like, it's gonna snap off, I think. Or it's like so close to snapping off. It's like, what has happened to that? That's no good. Is that for Just yeah, it's just like falling off pretty much. See, it's still got the car sandwiched between the two nuts. Nice. I like your cable tie job anyway. The cable tie was good. It worked. That was to space up the spacer. Job's done. Nearly. Yeah. Oh, what was that? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Nothing. How's your uh, duct? Is it ducty? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's not great actually. There's a big gap at the bottom. Oh well. Mm -hmm. At least you tried. It's Mark One, isn't it? Mm. Took you a few, uh, a few goes to get your duct right, didn't it? Took me a lot of goes to get my yeah. duct right. Yeah. Well, it can't be that efficient to have like radiator on radiator on radiator, right? Or is that how everyone does it? Well, look, an OEM car, they're all stacked, aren't they? There's a pack. I no think they've got, they've got to be. Yeah, they've got to be as close as possible. Aren't That's they? the problem. I think here. I think the issue is that the air's hitting this, and then like. Going off all in, yeah, wherever the fuck it wants. Core. Fluid dynamics, bro, that's what you want to be looking at, innit? So, hmm. Yeah. Oh, is that that diff that we're not going to fit? Yeah. Right. Cool. Just I think if, if we are having uh, the welder on, then I think the, the negative camber at the rear becomes a bit more important. Yeah, we are get cracked on, yeah. Good point. Right, let's get this checked. Oh, it looks alright, I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll get it checked and then we can get the sky then on and put some rear camber in. My car needs an alignment. Only on this side. There's some big curbs at Alton Park and I think I must have knocked the camber out of something on the left side, just a little bit. So both sides need an alignment, but I'm not gonna do it now. We're gonna fit the Dixel pads as well. I might continue this video on tomorrow or the next day whenever I do it, but we need to concentrate on the skyline because that's the one that's out next. And she's waiting, look. She's waiting for it. She wants to get that ruler and that string out. That's what she wants. Right, we're nearly up to the uh, the meat end. Uh, the meat end? We're nearly up to the juicy end. So we've got the wheels on with the semi-slicks. The 265 rear, it swallowed it. So we'll put the car on the ramp now, had some cambers. At the minute, I think we're about 0.1 positive, roughly. I've still got to wash this at some point before the end of the day, but don't worry about it. It's only seven o'clock. Why does time move so fast? Huh? So as you can hear, it's quite loud, yeah? Yeah, straight back at that. Straight back. The steering wheel isn't central, so we make it literally. This is the time to saw it. The steering wheel isn't centered? Yeah. How long has that been like that? Two track days. Right, okay. It was fine when we did it last year, though, right? Oh, no, no, since then we aligned it after. Did we do that? We aligned it wonky, yeah. We aligned it wonky. Christ. Good, good so track I thought, record. I thought, alright, we'll just move it over a bolt, and then yeah. no, it's too much. Oh really? Yeah. That's not how you fix alignments. We could do it getting the steering stopper in then, if we're doing that. Well, we did that last time. We'll do it this time though, right. Okay, looks like we're doing a full four wheel alignment. Yeah, Sunday at seven o'clock, what a time to start. Be worth it though, because it's, you know. It's feeling really good at the moment. Yeah. Interesting. See how she do. I do think we're going to be doing a lot of pushing tomorrow, because we've got 265 rear tyres, 225 front tyres. You know, which in itself is a strong stagger, but the rear tyres are obviously welded together, so it's going to be an interesting one. Bit of an operation just to get this thing on the ramp, but it's on. Right, we're onto the rear camber. The most exciting part these skylines have actually got loads of. Loads of arms going on, like, looks like a, an Accord rear end, maybe. Two calipers as well. Is they, are they both on the pedal, the two calipers? Or just one on the hydro? Yeah. Oh, it's one on the hydro, is it? No hydroings tomorrow. 
<laughs> the bar at the back had come loose. Well, it was loose, so that might be why the MR2 was reading off as well. Something the alignment on the MR2. Oh, you've not actually changed anything on the MR2, have you? No, I didn't change anything on it, so that's good. That would be alright, wouldn't it? So the toe's really far out on the front, but it's like that. So what they've done is they've borrowed my alignment equipment without telling me and done an alignment, but they've not straightened the steering wheel. So the steering wheel's been turned and then they've pulled the wheel straight. So then when they were driving, the steering wheel was like that. We did straighten the steering wheel. Apparently they did straighten the steering wheel, but. So yeah, we're having to do front toe anyway, but we kind of knew that, but obviously we'll do the rear camber and then toe after that. We'll do camber before toe, yeah. Right, we're all done with this alignment then. So we've got about three degrees of camber negative on the rear now, whereas we did have just over a degree of positive, or just under, sorry, a degree of positive before, so yeah, it should be a bit better on the circuit. The front's, it's got about, it's got a bit, maybe a bit too much front camber, but um, it'll be fine. Yeah, don't worry about it. We are going to be pushing on, as we say, but we're not setting lap times tomorrow, we're just trying to, you know, just going to have a good time, aren't we, Ed? That's all we're doing, we're just going to have a good time. So, you know, I thought we might be doing a bit more in this video, but we've not changed the diff. The diff would have been a big thing to, you know, if you're going to change a, a drifting car into a track car. Then. You know, why don't you just run the two-way all the time, Ed? Out of interest. Why didn't I? Oh, why don't you? Well, I bought it. Yeah. And then it was making an absolute fucking racket. Oh, okay. Um, and then it turns out learning curve on my side, I didn't realise you had to put certain oil in it for that specific diff. You put the wrong oil in it. So it's something to do with friction on the plates. Well, you, you should have asked your man here with the camera and he'd have told you all about that. It's a new world. Well, the, the fact that you're making a racket is not necessarily a bad thing. It'd only be a bad thing if you were driving it on the road. And you're not driving it on the road. No, when I say making a racket, yeah. it's like... Yeah. Did you, never, you never saw my Integra on the road, did you? No. So this is a problem. You'd have known all about it. Well, yeah, yeah, it does, it does, it does. That's what a plate of diff sounds like. Now, it's a bit different on the Integras because because we've got the box and the diff in one, then we wouldn't really want the friction modifiers because it can interfere with the synchros, but you haven't got that, have you? So it doesn't really matter. You know where you are with it. You do know where you are with the world of diff, yeah. But will we know where we are with the world of diff at Donington? <laughs> It's one of the spiciest tracks, I'd say, to, to go for the first time. Should be good. Do you not think it'll just be all over the place? It will take some, yeah, it'll take some calming. We'll have to be patient with it, I think, but we're only there really to make some big choo-choos and that, aren't we, in the straight lines? Embed the clutch in, of course. <laughs> my clutch stank, by the way, my new clutch. Saying that. Yeah, yeah, it stank at the circuit as well. Is it because it's organic material? I don't know, maybe. Similar but it worked to, fine. To brake pads. And you've seen my, my demon launch, so. Yeah, yeah. Well, now the snow foam's nearly done. Do I even put a sponge to it or do I just blast the snow foam off and call it a job? I can't be ass washing it. I might just blast it off. Team Rocket are blasting off again. I mean, that's, that's enough effort, isn't it, for someone to make. And we're going to wake up tomorrow and think, wow, what a waste of time that was. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. I just feel like the steering wheel's really close, but... Boost noise as well. We might have hard mounted. 
mounted his diff or hard mounted his gearbox or something. Drive straight though. I don't know why it's popping and banging so much. Why is it banging so much? That's not good for track days. Look how close the steering wheel is. You're a big lad as well, it should be sat further back. as well which is nice what's that futuristic device you've got there you understand it's a pro level trailer in wow that's gonna let you pull that big heavy trailer on your own is it maybe not on my own but you yeah, but nice on all the wheels isn't it huh. got a big lad don't be scared. Are you going to swing it round? Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. Definitely not. It's going to hit. It's going to hit the here. It, mm. Yeah, swing it round now. You're good. Hey, you're good. You've done it. Do you still need to push up here? Oh, you're going for a run-up, are you? Oh, what? <laughs> no, it's going backwards. <laughs> Jesus, that was a bit sketchy, wasn't it? At least your handbrake works. Yeah, I was sick of that. I don't really got a good crash as well. Straight into the door. Yeah. Oh, you're doing that. I'm going to wash the M3. Well, wipe the snow foam off. All right, we're officially done. Just a little garage intro, interlude in between some more track action. So tomorrow I'm gonna to be driving two free cars for reviews, I haven't washed my hands yet. Um, Kev's DC5 as well, an Area Motorsports Golf GTI. So you might have already seen a taster of that, I don't know yet. Depends how the videos go. What are we doing for spares? We've we got many spares. There's spares? The odd wheel or two. Two spare wheels, a rear. Okay. One spare front. Well, that's it then. Thanks for watching. Excited? Static. I'll see you at Donington Park tomorrow for a right. track day. It should be good. It will be good. It should be a good day. It'll be a good experience for you, lads. Might convert you, might turn into a grip car now. You have to say goodbye to all your friends. Yeah, I'm sure. Alright, I'll see you tomorrow, chaps.